Morning, everybody. So earlier I showed a video um, at that farm in the winter with the snowstorm and the cows, uh, the one I'm showing right here. And I said that I would talk about the post-processing necessary to actually print it. So today I'm going to show what differences uh, I did to the file to uh, print it on paper and kind of go through the whole process of choosing which pa uh, paper to use. So yeah, let's get started. Uh, so first off, the paper I decided to use was actually uh, one I'd seen before. It's uh, this big sheet. <laughs> uh, this is uh, Aurora Art Natural. Um, and the reason from obviously Red River paper. And the reason why I, I wanted to use it was because I had seen in, uh, in an art exhibit before what some photographer had used for um, printing their photos and they used this like watercolor paper and that's what the Aurora Art Natural is. It's this like, it's a matte, it's slightly warm, there's no brighteners, um, kind of watercolor texture paper. And the reason why I picked a watercolor texture is because of the snow. I wanted some of that paper texture to come through to make it look like it was actually part of the snow. Uh, and the reason why I liked the warmth of the paper was because, I don't know, I think it kind of adds something to the texture for the snow. Uh, having just pure white, I think, would kind of blow out the, um, the image, and I liked having that detail. So, yeah, uh, we'll do a close-up, and you can see what, the, what this texture actually looks like. So, you know, I don't know if I'll show up on video, but I'll show the details anyway. Um, so with the paper choice picked, I'll actually go through and start editing the, the image on the computer now. Uh, there's not much difference, but when printing, there's always a difference between what you see on the screen um, and what actually comes through on the print. So yeah, let's get to the computer. Okay, so at the computer, I've got the file that I had from the previous video, which is this um, edited vi version here. So the first thing I want to do when I make a proof copy is I actually want to go down here to the left where it says soft proofing and I want to click that. So this kind of shows what it, the picture is going to look like based off of whatever printer profile is set in the top right. So I know I'm using the Aurora uh, Fine Art Natural uh, and my printer is a Canon Pixma Pro 100 that I got on a sale many years ago is pretty awesome. Um, so I want to set the paper and the printer profile here. I'll set that and I want to use perceptual. To be honest, I am not sure what the difference is between the relative and the perceptual in terms of quality. I know what they are in theory, but in every, <laughs> everything looked onto which, which is better for whatever purpose, um, Basically, everyone said it depends. Um, the most helpful thing I found was that for matte paper, like the natural paper I'm using here, perceptual is a little bit better. So that's why I've chosen perceptual here. So now that I've got the profile and the intent set, I'm actually going to make a proof copy. Um, this allows me to make changes to the actual proof. As you can see, there's a huge difference already just by hitting the, the soft proofing. Um, it's a lot more washed out. It looks a lot more yellow uh, in the proof copy. So I know I'll have to make some changes. So I'll make a, a proof copy. And now I'm actually working on the virtual copy that's a proof copy. Um, so what changes do we need to make? Well, I think overall it's a little yellow. So I'm going to actually change the white balance off of cloudy. Uh, let's go to... 6200 is what I said with the final. I'm, I'm <laughs> same thing. I I already I did all the edits and I'm just changing to what the um, what the final version I have is just to save some time. Um, and so I've changed the white balance. It's a little bluer. It's not as yellow. And I noticed that overall it's a little dark. So I'm going to boost the exposure by 0.35. Uh, that's that's quite a bit better, as you can see already. Um, it's not as colorful in the wrong way, and there's actually white in the snow. Um, I also want to increase the contrast a little bit because the black uh, fur here has gotten a little washed out. So, uh, gonna change it up 
by 3, so it's 38. And I will now start tweaking these individual settings. So I want more white. Um, you can see here in this histogram, there's actually almost nothing clipping, risking clipping in the whites or the brights. So this is snow, so there should logically be some stuff up here that's very bright. So let's start tweaking that a little bit. So we've got, um, I changed the highlights by five. I changed the, here, there's a little bit too much in the dark, so I'm gonna change the shadows by seven. I will change the whites by a pretty large number, 15. Um, and you can see here, uh, even though the histogram says there's no risk of clipping, I actually think that maybe it's starting to go a little too white. Uh, the roof here is starting to blend into the clouds. So I think I'm actually gonna stop the white and the highlight uh, tweaking there because it still preserves some nice detail here. Um, and change the blacks by seven. So it still brightens up the fur a little bit. Um, then I'm going to add a little bit more clarity, go from 35 to 38 to give a little bit more structure. Um, you can see here, uh, we'll go back a second. So it's a slight difference if we zoom in, um, increasing the clarity, adds a little bit more structure into the fine details here. One thing I've noticed is that even though I've changed the white balance so it's bluer and not as yellow, the actual yellow on the fur, it, it's no longer cream colored. It's kind of, um, well, it looks kind of dirty. <laughs> so I'm going to change the orange and the yellow saturation here too. So from minus 18 to minus 20 and from minus 25 to minus 35. So now their fur is especially this one, the fur's gotten more to uh, too cream color like it's supposed to be in the picture. Um, and this was actually the, these are the settings of the final version that I printed. Uh, you can actually zoom in more. Um, it still has some of this like, nice structure and the details in the fur. Um, and it kind of looks how it's supposed to look, in my opinion. The difference is that now it's soft proofing. So, what does that mean in terms of um, changes? Uh, so the soft proofing simulates what it's going to look like on paper, right? So if I turn this off, you can see like it looks very different. But because we're using actual, you know, paper to print on, we want to simulate what it kind of looks like. And, you know, it looks a little too sharp and detailed here, but in the print, it'll actually kind of get muddled out and softened. Uh, and that's why we, we do these additional tweaks when we go to the uh, printed version. For the print itself, um, I actually have a template. I know I have a 13 by 19 sheet. So I set the paper size to be 13 by 19. I know what the printer is. Um, and then I just set this is a, a 12 by 18 frame as you can see here, or cell size. So the picture will just auto rotate and fit in there. Um, and then I set it to 300 PPI because I like those crispy details. <laughs> uh, I set the print sharpening to standard and I set the media type to matte. Um, I will set the paper to the correct profile um, and then set the intent to perceptual. And then after that, I will actually go to the printer and you can see all these settings here. And once I hit OK, it's going to print. So let's actually show what the print is going to look like.
So I now have the final print right here. Uh, let me zoom out. And so you can see, um, unfortunately, and I had to learn this the hard way, um, when you're printing, the final step is to actually um, let it sit for like a day. <laughs> the reason why is because there's a bunch of chemicals and stuff in the ink. Um, and solvent, which the ink is displaced, is in solution with, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it has to set and it has to dry. So sometimes, and I've actually seen this happen, the, the print you get straight out of the printer like that, um, after a day or two actually looks totally different. So those settings I picked was, were actually after I did a test print and liked the results. So that's how I ended up picking those settings. It's now just like fiddling around on the computer. So even though the uh, software simulates what you can get with the print, it's not entirely accurate. Important things to know if you're going to print is you will make test prints. They may not look right and you will have to go back and tweak. That's okay. I mean, it's part of the fun of making prints anyway. So it's good to experiment. Um, and even though I printed that one, uh, I'll actually show you now in my little portfolio here. Um, this is the final print that has been sitting. Uh, it's set for about a day. Uh, <laughs> it's set for about a day. Um, so I actually really like how this one came out. I can take it out of the polypropylene, but I don't think you'll notice any difference anyway. Um, yeah, it is really nice. Um, so the second one that I printed will probably either go to my brother or who knows. But yeah, anyway, if you have a camera, even if it's just a phone, you should try printing them because, I don't know, I think it's really cool to just like have prints. Um, and when I say portfolio and having prints, um, this is not the only thing in here. So I also have pictures from a bunch of places. So, you know, San Francisco, Quebec City, Amherst, Boston, Beijing, Amherst, Acadia National Park. All these are done on different paper, uh, Istanbul, different areas of the world. Um, and they're just like, it's just fun. You know, Shanghai. I think it's just fun to have these pictures and you just have them and look at them. Uh, Montreal. So yeah. If you've got pictures, print them, no matter how big or small. It's really cool to look through them after. Okay, so that's the end of this video. I'll talk to you later, all right? All right, bye.